All right, it's nine o'clock. I'm getting started here. So you know how we do the drill every day on Saturdays. Saturday Fantasy Baseball, uh, nine o'clock every Saturday. <laughs> Lady in the Legend Sundays at nine a.m. Monday through Friday, Lenny's Daily Podcast, 9 a.m. You could join us in the chat room. Join us to have debate and conversation with the live chat room. It is LennyMelnickFantasySports.com forward slash live. And that is every day, seven days a week. Now, some of you are probably wondering in the chat room, and I'll say hi to all of you in just a moment. I changed my profile today. I'm not Andrea Sox fan. I'm not Andrea L. I am Roto Lady today. And the reason I'm Roto Lady is because yesterday, Paul, well, gosh, I want to wait until it shows up in the chat room so you guys can hear me. I don't want to tell stories until you get here. All right, we're live. So Lenny, tell everybody in the chat room to refresh. Sound is good. Um, all right, so let's get started. I want to tell you a little story. Today I'm Roto Lady in the chat room. Usually my name is Andrea L. But yesterday, Boston Paul asked me, who happens to live in Wisconsin right now, if I, if, he knew we went to Miller Park, but he asked us uh, how we liked Miller Park. And I told him that Mark was very young when we went to Miller Park, but they have a great kids area there, and my profile picture for Roto Lady at this chat room is me and Mark as a young little boy sitting in a huge glove at Miller Park. I remember going to that game. I remember buying a Ryan Braun bag that day that I kept for years, and uh, is James here? And I ended up taking that old Ryan Braun bag. I took the the uh, embroidered letters off of that bag and um, made a Milwaukee Brewers see-through handbag for James Caprillion's wife and sent it to her. So anyway, that's the story behind being Roto Lady today. Hello, Doug. Great to see you. Doug Kohler from Oklahoma. Nice to see you here. Let me go ahead and say hi to everybody in the chat room. Brooksy's here. Woo woo, Brooksy. Getting ready for football, I assume. Chris from Cambridge, Chris Gallo. Sorry, Gallo, we had to delete a trade that you were trying to make. It just uh, We'll have to talk more about that later. Eddie Heckman here, you're in the trade too. Data Premier, Jay Gibbs, Leonard Donaldson, Laura, Mary. We had a wonderful time at the Mets game. It's great to have you both here in the chat room. Of course, Lenny is here. Malpal, Merrill, I hope Mitchell's here. Can you tell me the rest of the names on the list, Leonard? I can't. You got Merrill Hartson. You got uh, Rotorius. Rotorius. Star Dog. Star, all Star Dog. Happy birthday, Tommy Johnson. Happy birthday, Tommy Johnson. Triple play. Triple play. Unholy Toledo. My favorite, Unholy and his dogs. There you go. That's all right. And a cast of thousands guests. And Doug, of course, is guest uh, Rachel here today. Merrill is here now. Chris Gallo thinks Eddie was drunk. I do, too. We'll let that one pass, Eddie. We love you, and we hope that everything is good. We still love you, and we're going to talk lots. And today is official Henry Davis Day in the chat room. I love to do these official days in the chat room when a player does something spectacular. Henry Davis, the rookie, in his 27th MLB game of his career hit two home runs yesterday against Otani. Uh, That's crazy because Otani has allowed 13 earned runs over his last start, the most for him in any three-start stretch this season. But the thing is, he's the first player ever to hit two home runs in a single game off of Otani. Now, Davis... He doubled his homer count for the season to four now. He's got 11 RBIs, 16 runs scored, three stolen bases, a 295 batting average, and a 391 on base percentage over his first 110 plate appearances. He continues to play regularly in right field despite coming up through the Pirates system as a catcher. Uh, 
Now, according to John Morosi, and we're going to get back to talking about Otani now, it's so interesting. Just like the chances to get into the playoffs at Fangraphs changes just about every day. Also, the idea that Otani is getting traded before the deadline pretty much changes every day. Now, John Morosi says that according to what his sources tell him, if the Angels can pass the Yankees and the Red Sox by August 1st, Otani will finish the season in an Angels uniform. We were listening to Loud Outs last night. It's a show that Lenny likes to listen to when he goes to bed. They're doing this... um, They're asking everybody, basically every day, what are the chances that Otani gets traded? And um, I think it was Spillbores that started out saying that there was a 95% chance Otani was going to get traded. And then the next day, he changed it to a 5% chance. And I think this little tidbit by John Morosi is telling, uh, based on what his sources tell him, if the Angels pass the Yankees... And the Red Sox, by August 1st, they will not trade Otani. Now, who knows if that's true? You know how I feel about listening to what these people say and their projections and their rumors and all of this. But it makes sense. So I think that the Angels are not really sure. But you can guarantee that their phone is ringing off the hook right now for Otani offers. I contemplated making this official Juan Soto day. But I chose to do Henry instead because everybody knows that I'm a Soto homer and I didn't want it to be that obvious. So anyway, but Soto did have a good game yesterday. He hit two huge home runs yesterday. His home run in the first inning was estimated at 447 feet and his third inning home run came in at 463 feet. And he also drew his majors leading 93rd walk. So whether or not... a Soto is great for fantasy this year. We all know he hasn't really lived up to his first-round draft pick status. But he's leading the majors with walks, and it's important not to forget that. We always knew Soto was better in on-base percentage leagues than regular average leagues, but, you know, that's one of his specialties. But he joins one. I want you guys to guess in the chat room, okay? I'll take guesses from everybody. Soto is tied for the most games with multiple home runs and at least one walk before the age of 25. Who is it? And he's not playing now, and he hasn't played in quite a while. But again, Soto is tied with the most games, multiple home runs, and at least one walk before the age of 25. Who's the other hitter? So we'll get some guesses going out for that. Juan Soto now has 14 career multi-home run games, tied for 8th most before turning 5. Leonard Donaldson says A-Rod. Lenny says Griffey. Chris from Cambridge says Kevin Minch. Triple play, Ted Williams. Post-1958, good morning to you. Bonds, he says. None of those are right. Keep guessing. Our friend Craig Mish down in, in Miami talks about the Marlins now. The Marlins lost for the seventh straight time yesterday. The Red Sox beat them 6-1. to one. He says this is no longer your standard baseball losing streak. Johnny Cueto is trying to end the losing streak today. The Marlins have lost seven straight coming out of the All-Star break. And he says decisions will be made very soon. He also asked uh, Skip Schumacher why. What changed so quickly to put Cueto back in the rotation. And Skip Schumacher says that his appearance in Baltimore in his rehab, and they definitely need some length. So basically the answer is we have too many youngsters who are getting close to their innings limits, and we only have Johnny Cueto to fill the spot, basically. (laughs) Okay. All right, Bo Jackson, A-Rod, it's not either of those. Edgar Martinez from Brooksy, no. Unholy Toledo says Sammy Sosa, no. Keep guessing, you guys are close. Should I tell them, Leonard? They all guessed. Mickey Mantle is the answer. Oh, okay. But thank you for all your participation. We really like it. Okay. 
The Pirates-Angels game was the first nine-inning game in MLB history in which each team hit four home runs while also striking out 13 times. All right, Red Sox infielder Trevor Story began a rehab assignment yesterday. He played five innings at shortstop. Today he's going to be the designated hitter, and he's going to return to the shortstop position tomorrow. So we have... Trevor Story on his way back. Now, this is for you, Unholy. Cody Bellinger having a great year. Yesterday, a triple shy of the cycle through three plate appearances. He has 38 hits in his last 23 games, 447 batting average. It's the highest in Major League Baseball since June 24th. Nobody is above 400 except for Bellinger. You know the phone is ringing right now with calls for Bellinger as well. Probably more than the phone is ringing for Stroman, who hasn't been good in his last five starts. I read a tidbit today that's too long to really hash out on this podcast, but it basically, in a nutshell, said that and it showed Stroman's last five starts, and none of them have been great. Bellinger also is great on off-speed pitches this season. He's got five home runs on off-speed pitches. Last year, he hit only three home runs on off-speed pitches, so he is really crushing the off-speed pitches. Lenny says Otani must approve a deal if the Angels want to re-sign him. Yes. What does that mean? It means that uh, if the Angels want to re-sign him, Otani must say, I like that deal. Go ahead. If he says he doesn't like it, he will not re-sign with him. Well, isn't that true for everybody? Nope. Otani wants to be on a winning team. Otani wants to be on a winning team. That's really what Lenny was just saying. All right, Matt, Matt McLean, where's King Turd? Is King Turd here? I can't see my... Leonard, is King Not Turd? Here. Not here. All right, well, this one's for you, King Turd, if you're listening later. Matt McLean and J.R. Matz, you're here. That's good enough. We're talking about Matt McLean. Hey, J.R. Matz, great to see you. Moose, Mikey, Danny, too. I got to say... We're going to talk about Barrero today, too, and uh, how some of the sports writers are saying that Barrero is getting better. And we knew that already because J.R. Matz gave me an update when he was at the game last week. Anyway, back to Matt McClain. He's a franchise-saving player, and he doesn't get talked about like he should. He's He could be considered the Reds' most valuable player in less than 50 games played this season. He's batting 301, nine home runs, eight stolen bases, and 34 RBI. All right, the kids are still in bed. They were late out last night at the game. I love the family game time. It's great. The Kansas City Royals are 28 and 70. They're 22 games back. All Star Dog, this is for you. Sorry. They're 22 games back in the worst division in baseball. And the thing about this is that the Royals have drafted in the top 10 of the MLB draft five years in a row, and they have literally zero top 100 prospects, according to MLB Pipeline. How does that happen? You draft in the top 10 every year, five straight years, And you don't have one prospect in the top 100 prospects? That's horrible. Uh, Kodai Senga. Now, you got Kodai Senga, who has plus 8,000 odds to win the Cy Young Award. Spencer Strider, on the other hand, has 250, plus 250 odds to win the Cy Young Award. And I got to tell you, the only real thing that Spencer Strider crushes against Kodai Senga is the number of strikeouts. We knew Spencer Strider was going to strike out a ton of batters, but listen to his stats. He's 11-3 and with a 378 ERA in 116 innings pitched with 189 strikeouts and a 109 whip. Compare that to Kodai Senga, who's 7-5 and with a 3-2-0 ERA in 95 innings pitched, 122 strikeouts, and a 1-2-6 whip. The chances of a Tim Anderson trade. Now, I told you last week it was pretty funny. Daniel Ferrara, our resident White Sox fan, 
told us that Ozzie Guillen got on air and said that the White Sox don't have the balls to move Tim Anderson out of the second spot in the lineup, even though he's been having a horrible season. Although, let me tell you this. He is doing great after the All-Star break, all right? So we'll give credit where credit is due. And the thing about Tim Anderson is the chances of a trade are rising. So if they don't have the balls to move him out of the two spot, do they have the balls to trade him? I don't know. But here's the deal. He does play second base too. And he did play second base in the World Baseball Classic. So he can be used as second base should a team need a second baseman. He's hitting 375 with a 444 on base percentage since the All Star break. I know it's a small sample size, but teams have been waiting for the evidence that he is back, right? Now, between the end of last year, the World Baseball Classic, spring training, and all of 2023 so far, he's gone over 400 at-bats without a home run. Like I said, the reason that we're talking about the trade possibility going up with him is the fact that he's hitting excellent out of the All-Star break. And, you know, hey, the White Sox aren't competing. But do you know who is competing? It's Luis Robert. Listen to this. He has about 50 more total bases than any center fielder this season, okay? This season, I mean, the next guy on the list is me and Mary's favorite, Brandon Nimmo. But you also have Julio Rodriguez, Mike Trout, and Leotis Tavares. Those guys are at least 50 bases total behind Luis Robert. And interestingly enough, Luis Robert is exactly the same on the road as he is at home. So far this season, 28 home runs, 14 on the road and 14 at home. He's got 24 doubles on the season, 12 at home and 12 on the road, 64 runs scored total, 32 home and 32 on the road. John Morosi says the Dodgers aren't the only NL West team pursuing the White Sox starter Lucas Giolito. Sources say the Diamondbacks have inquired about Giolito as well. Interesting. I mean, the Diamondbacks got a new pitching coach, and they've been excellent with their pitching. I would love to see a guy like Giolito join my friend Zach Gallen over there in Arizona. You think about this. Let me tell you the lowest ERA pitchers since June 1st with a minimum of 50 innings pitched. You got Blake Snell crushing everybody, dude, with the lowest ERA since June 1st, 0.69. Joel Musgrove, Boston Paul, of course, I traded this guy. He's got a 1AO ERA since June 1st. Andrew Abbott, 210. Taiwan Walker, 267. Aaron Savale, 268, and Ranger Suarez, 268. Those are an interesting group of starting pitchers, right? Unholy says the Dodgers are interested in Tim Anderson. Uh, Guess Doug Kohler, OKC, strike out all you want. Chicks dig the long ball. That's right, they do. I can vouch for that. All right, Astros. It says the Astros and the Rays are showing interest in Michael Lorenzen. Very funny. All right, the Cardinals traded Genesis Cabrera. You know, we talked a lot about whether or not the Cardinals were going to be sellers at the deadline. They clearly are sellers. Despite their six-game winning streak, they still plan to sell at the deadline. Yesterday, they traded Genesis Cabrera to the Blue Jays in exchange for minor league catching prospect Sammy Hernandez. The Cardinals DFA'd Cabrera on Monday. Daniel Hello, Daniel. I was just talking about you. Your ears must have been burning. What do you think? Are they going to trade Tim Anderson now that he's hitting great? I got to hear from our resident White Sox fan. All right. Noah Syndergaard, second rehab start with OKC. Five innings pitch, six hits, four earned runs, but he didn't walk anybody, which is good, and he only struck out two. He did retire 15 of 17 batters through five innings before the sixth inning opened with four straight hits, leading to three runs. It took him 77 pitches, 58 of which were strikes. Boston Paul says Sammy Hernandez is good, by the way. All right, J.R. Matz, we're going to talk about Barrero. I got to let me pull something up here because I think it's great. 
Now, this is what Jonathan Motzinger said to me. That's J.R. Matt. This is what he said to me uh, July 15th at 8.33 p.m. He said, Barrero looks great. He coaxed a 10-pitch walk. Great foul balls on curves. Second at bat, he crushed a double. It, he looks more relaxed and patient, and he's op- optimistic. And then he texted me back and said that he stole two bases, right? Now, that was on the 15th. Now, listen to what this writer says about Jose Barrera. He says that in July, for AAA Louisville, 49 at bats, 367 batting average, 475 on base percentage, 10 extra base hits, and 7 stolen bases. Barrero can be a quality bench bat moving forward with premium position versatility. He means that he also plays outfield and shortstop. So pretty much exactly the same thing that J.R. Matt's already told me. That's why I love this chat room. That's why you're all my baseball friends. And that's what you get out of coming to our podcast every day at 9 a.m. You're at the 20 minute mark. Okay. I'm at the 20 minute mark. All right, let me scroll through some of these and just hit the biggies. Lenny talked about all-star closer Felix Batista. He's becoming a legitimate AL Cy Young candidate. We already talked about his stats. No need to go over those again. But here's a good one. The Yankees, who are in last place this this late in the season for the first time since like 1990. Forgive me if I got the exact date wrong, but it's been a long, long time. And the last time they were in last place at this point in the season, they literally finished the season in last place. So the Yankees are having a tough time of it. But Aaron Judge is on his way back. He's playing in a simulated game today. Also, their schedule is really lightening up a lot. The Yankees... This is who they get to face next. The Cardinals, the Cubs, the Rockies, the Angels, and the Royals. So you should see the Yankees move up a little bit. Hopefully, for them, they move out of last place. The changes in playoff chances since July 4th via fan graphs. The Baltimore Orioles have gone up 36% and the Yankees have gone down 47% in their playoff chances. We talk about the Mets and how disappointing of a season they've had which is true they had a great game the day I went and I'm so lucky for that but when are they going to call up Matt Vientos when are they going to call up Ronnie Mauricio these two youngsters could really make a difference just in the clubhouse at least for the fans they des- just oh Vientos was called up who's next Ronnie Mauricio right except he went two for two the other day Vientos or Mauricio no Vientos was called up Mauricio two for two 15th home run in Syracuse. Vientos was called up. He went two for two. Uh, Ronnie Mauricio is crushing it down at Syracuse. He's got 15 home runs on the season. Okay, let's keep going here. Camilo Duvall became the first pitcher to 30 saves this season. Uh, Will Benson has the fourth lowest chase rate in MLB. Similar approach like Joey Votto. I like Will Benson. And Ellie De La Cruz, we talk a lot about Ellie, how exciting he is. He steals a lot of bases. He's most fun to watch, and we can all probably agree on that. But he literally is at the top 10 in ground ball percentage, which is not going to fare good for him going through. I mean, he's so young. He's got lots of chances to fix up his launch angle if that's the problem. But Guess who's first on the list in ground ball percentage? It's freaking Tim Anderson, okay? There's three White Sox. No, there's there's just one. Tim Anderson and Oscar Colas are in the top four for ground ball percentage this year. So there's two White Sox and two Cubbies. Anthony Rendon is getting paid way, way too much money, okay? Way too much money. Here we go on the games. Great fun, great turnout for Saturday baseball. You're right, it is, and it's a fun time for everybody, and we are so thankful to have all of you people talking baseball. Great to see you, Big Al on the Prowl, and Daniel, and Gallo, Eddie. We love it, and we love you. Cody Bellinger, two-run homer. The Cubbies stopped St. Louis' six-game win streak. They beat the Cardinals 4-3. to 
Yes, four to three. Bellinger finished with three hits in another strong performance at the plate. He's 10 for 20 in his last five games. Since he returned from a bruised knee on June 15th, he's batting 381 with six home runs. The Cubbies improved to four and four on their 10 game homestand. Of course, Bellinger didn't answer questions regarding a possible trade, but David Ross did call Bellinger a pleasure to be around, and you how can you disagree with that, right? I think Bellinger should stay. It's going to be sad if they trade him, but who could blame him? Baseball is a business, right, Unholy? Justin Steele struck out a season-high nine and six and a third. He allowed two runs and six hits. Flaherty, four runs and eight hits in six innings. Cubbies, Miles Mastrobuni hit his first big league homer in his 45th big league game. Adber Alzale got his eighth save. We talked about Genesis Cabrera for Sammy Hernandez. Dan B. Swanson ran the bases before the game. Dennis Hello, Dr. Dennis and uh, Aiden, our favorite, one of our favorite youngsters. We have a lot, but hello, Aiden, too. If you're home from camp or whatever, maybe you're sleeping. I'm glad your dad is here. Nick Madrigal was set to make a rehab appearance at AAA. Tonight you get to see Miles Mikolas against Ma- Lenny's favorite, Michael Fulmer. He stinks as a starter, by the way. My favorite was Kikuchi. You get to him. Yes, I'm going to get to Kikuchi Leonard. Seems like we talk about Kikuchi every single weekend. Yeah, every other day, Kikuchi. I know. Cubbies can afford to keep Bellinger if they want to, according to Unholy, and I agree. I hope they do. J.R. Matt says Ellie is going to get hits on ground balls just because he runs so fast. He says he's worried about his strikeouts. He just can't seem to put the bat on the ball, but he will. Tampa Bay Rays beat the Orioles 3 to nothing. Baltimore leads the AL East with a 608 winning percentage compared to Tampa Bay's 604. The Orioles trailed the Rays by six and a half games at the beginning of July. Rays stopped a five game losing streak and they improved to four and 12 in July. So yes, it's an improvement, but still a horrible record. Baltimore lost for just the third time in 13 games and had a season-high six-game road win streak end. My boy Zach Eflin pitched seven strong innings. He's the AL's third 11-game winner. He allowed two hits, struck out eight, walked one. He's 10-1 and one in his last 11 starts at home. So, Hello, Danny. Great to see you. And there you go. Make sure you play uh, in your DFS lineup. Zach Eflin at home. He's 10 and 1 in his last 11 starts at home. Shane McClanahan, Nathan Eovaldi, and Eflin now, the only American League starters with 11 wins. Eflin threw 63 of his 87 pitches for strikes. Kyle Bradish didn't allow a run over his last 13 and a third innings in consecutive wins. He gave up two runs and six hits in six innings. Pete Fairbanks got his 11th save and 12 chances. Isaac Paredes and Jose Siri homered. Jose Siri has a team leading 20 home runs. And why, oh why, Eddie Heckman, may I ask, did the Orioles decide to take on Fujinami, who's been the worst pitcher in baseball all season? Siri hit his 20th homer off of Fujinami. Francisco Mejia went on the 10-day injured list with a sprained right knee. He will be reevaluated in two weeks, and tonight you get to see Grayson Rodriguez against Shane McClanahan. The Rockies starter Peter Lambert mostly lost the last three seasons due to Tommy John surgery, but last night he looked like the promising prospect he once was. He pitched five shutout innings in the Rockies' 6-1 victory over the Marlins, who dropped their seventh straight since the All-Star break. Entering the All-Star break, the Marlins held the National League's top wildcard spot, but their losing streak has dropped them a percentage point behind Philly in the race for a postseason bid. Marlins hitters continued to struggle with runners in scoring position. They went 0-5 for last night, and they're 12-70 for during their seven-game losing streak. Lambert struck out three, gave up three hits and a walk, He returned from a three-week stint in the minors aimed at converting him back into a starter. 
CJ Crone, Jerickson Profar, and Elias Diaz all homered off of Braxton Garrett, who gave up six runs over three innings. It was his second straight poor outing after giving up four runs in four and two thirds. I'm telling you, this Braxton Garrett is about to get sent down. He's already reached his inning. Well, he's almost reached his innings that he pitched last year. The Miami Marlins are going to be dealing with this issue with their rookies, their youngsters. They are not ready to throw a 200-inning season. I mean, if it was up to me, I'd have them out there till something happened. I think that <laughs> I think they baby these pitchers way too much, but it's not up to me clearly. And what they did with Yuri Perez sending him down before when he hit his innings, Matt, then you got this other guy, Lambert, who's up now, and you got Johnny Cueto coming back. So I would have to say the Marlins rotation is in flux, and Braxton Garrett is going to be the next one to get his innings limit snapped, you know. George Soriano, Marlins reliever, struck out six straight and eight overall. He pitched four shutout innings. Kyle Freeland will throw a bullpen today, and Bud Black expects him to start next weekend at home against Oakland. Jazz Chisholm has begun doing core rotation exercise, and again tonight you get to see Johnny Cueto against Chase Anderson. If I love Eddie, then show him some love in the trade he offered me. I'll be happy to put that trade through as long as Eddie can say how that trade helps his team. I've never seen anything like it. There was two trades yesterday that Eddie was involved in that Lenny and I had to look at, and we could not figure out in the world how those trades helped Eddie's team at all. So that's why we had to veto it. You know, Lenny and I do not veto trades. We do not believe that you should ever really veto trades. I know there's people out there that think, oh, you know, every trade should be vetoed and stuff like that. And Lenny and I do not think like that at all. But when the integrity of the league is being damaged by somebody trading off players in a, cl- I mean, if Eddie can tell us how those trades help his team, then we're happy to put the trade through. But I feel you. I think Eddie was drunk too. <laughs> No offense, Eddie. We love you. We hope you're not mad, but you just have to tell us how it helps your team and we will put them through immediately. I mean, one time Lenny traded Sean Figgins. No, he traded Albert Pujols to get back Sean Figgins and Pujols was in his prime, but Sean Figgins was a base stealer from heaven. He stole He was on pace for like 50 steals that year. And Lenny was going to win that league if he got some stolen bases. And he had a lot of home runs. And he he wasn't worried about losing points and home runs. And a lot of people complained about that trade. And Lenny just said, "I'm look at my stats. Look at the standings. I need a couple points in stolen bases and I can win this league. And they let it go through. But there were a lot of people that were pissed because in a lot of people's minds, that was not a fair trade. However, Lenny did end up winning the league that year because of that trade. So it's all about how it helps your team. Juan Soto hit two home runs and the Padres beat the Tigers five to four. He also drew his majors leading 93rd walk. The Tigers didn't get a base runner after the seventh inning. Seth Lugo allowed two runs on six hits in six innings. Josh Hader, 24th save. Reese Olsen took the loss. He allowed five runs on seven hits in five innings. Jake Cronenworth hit a triple. Zach McKinstry homered. Javi Baez tripled and scored. Riley Green hit a two-run homer. And tonight you get to see Jackson Wolf. This is San Diego pitcher, a lefty, making his Major League debut. He's 24 years old. He had a 3.39 ERA and a .99 whip. 104 strikeouts and 20 walks in 85 innings and 17 starts this season with Double A San Antonio. He is probably worth an immediate try in fantasy because he's going up against Detroit. They rank 28th in team OPS. He was a fourth round pick in the 2021 MLB draft out of West Virginia University. So no, he never made it to Triple A, but he's making his debut tonight. His name is Jackson Wolf. And he's done very well this season, so you might want to consider picking him up. The New York Yankees got a much-needed win, of course, against the Kansas City Royals. Yankees stopped a four-game slide and won for the 
third time in 12 games since July 4th. The Yankees hit three homers for the fourth time since Aaron Judge tore a ligament on June 3rd. And if you could see Aaron Judge doing his running around the field and doing his exercises, you would say, why the hell is he not playing? He, I mean, he's got a torn ligament in his toe, but he's doing all of these kinds of drills where you put your knees up really high and you're jogging around real fast. And Lenny and I are just looking at each other like, why is he not at least DHing? He's clearly able to get around the bases, and he doesn't need to run that fast because he <laughs> hits bombs all the time. Anyway, the Yankees improved to 16-22 and 22 without Judge, who took batting practice on the field before the victory. The poor Royals lost for the 11th time in 14 games. They dropped to 1-8 and eight in their last nine games against the Yankees. The starting pitcher, Clark Schmidt, three runs and five hits in five and two-thirds. Up against uh, Kansas City rookie Alec Marsh, who made his fourth big league start yesterday and allowed five runs and five hits and five and a third. Miguel Sano would look fantastic in a home Cubs uniform. Manning the bag at first base. Unholy says, good thought, Chris. Judge back two weeks. He needs to be back now. Oh, here's Dennis Timko. We have a freaking podiatrist in the chat room, okay? He says it's because those types of injuries can get re-aggravated pretty quickly. He's going to be dealing with discomfort in his toe for a long time. Those little tiny ligaments in the foot take a long time, especially near the toes. Love it. Forgot to ask our foot doctor in the chat room. Billy McKinney hit a three-run homer and made two key catches in center field. It was his fifth of the season. He made his sixth start in center field this season because Harrison Bader was held out after bruising his ribs. Franchi Cordero homered for the second straight game. What? Franchi Cordero? What team is he on now? I thought last time I checked he was a Red Sox. Before that he was a Padre. What team? Is he a Yankees? I don't know if he's a Yankee or a Royal. Glaber Torres went deep and extended his hitting streak to 11 games. Michael Massey hit a three-run homer and a solo home run for Kansas City. That's two home runs in one game. It was his first career multi-homer game. His last homer was on May 29th. Clay Holmes got his 12th save. Now Judge is going to face Loizaga today in a simulated game. Catcher Jose Trevino was placed on the injured list and will undergo surgery that will likely sideline him for the rest of the season. And tonight you get to see Garrett Cole against Brady Singer. Washington Nationals beat the Giants 5-3. The Giants have dropped three in a row since seven-game winning streak that spanned the All-Star break. The Giants began play Friday two games behind the NL West leading Los Angeles Dodgers You hear that, Danny Fuller? The Giants are right on your tail, two games out. The Nationals had lost four out of five. Jake Irvin struck out a career-high nine and defeated the Giants for the second time this season. He pitched a career-best six and two-thirds innings and struck out five hitters looking. He leaned on his changeup more as the night unfolded and induced 13 swings and miss, which are another career-high. Alex Wood allowed five runs in four-plus innings, five hits, struck out one. C.J. Abrams having a season, isn't he? Continued his torrid month, recording his ninth multi-hit game of July, 13 in his first 81 games, and now nine just in the month of July. He has really thrived since they moved him into the leadoff spot on July 7th. He's batting 415 in the last 10 games. He also stole his 10 base in the last 11 games. A birthday bucket list for Tommy Johnson in the future is to attend the Yankees and Mets games in New York. <laughs> All right. That's a good bucket list. Royals Baseball Academy was an excellent academy. I don't know what happened to the Royals. They are just not doing it. It's They must not be doing that old school the way that they used to teach these youngsters and how they started to build a team. I mean, I can't really explain it, but there was a whole book written about this. 
And um, they've drafted in the top 10 MLB draft for the last five years straight and don't have one prospect in the top 100. Lane Thomas homered, J.D. Davis and Jock Peterson homered, Kiebert Ruiz, RBI double, Kyle Finnegan got his 13th save. Now, Kapler says that right-handed pitcher Luke Jackson is right on the cusp of being activated from the injured list. Hunter Harvey for the Nationals said he didn't have a timeline for returning from his elbow strain. Carl Edwards Jr. threw a 21-pitch bullpen session yesterday. Tonight, you get to see Logan Webb, who is 1-0 with a 1.59 ERA and 28 strikeouts in 22 and two-thirds innings this month against Josiah Gray, who is 2-0 with a 3.18 ERA in three career appearances against the Giants. Here we go, J.R. Matz. Matt McClain hit his first career grand slam, and the Reds extended their winning streak to three games with a 9-6 win over the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks began the day two games behind the first-place Dodgers. Oh, there you go. Not just the Giants on your ass, Danny Fuller. The Diamondbacks. And this, okay, the Diamondbacks began the day two games behind the first place Dodgers in the NL West and the second place Reds trailed the Brewers by one and a half games in the NL Central. McLean has nine homers in 56 games. Tommy Henry took the loss. He allowed four walks, three of which scored four hits and struck out two in four and two, uh, third innings. Kettle Marte had a sixth career multi-hit game. He homered twice and got a triple. Alec Thomas had a home run. Alex Diaz recorded his 28th save and Steer hit a two-run double. Lou Volo says controlling the Reds' running game will be key in this series. The Diamondbacks didn't get off to a good start last night when the Reds pulled off a double steal in the first inning, which led to a run. The Reds lead the major leagues with 117 stolen bases, but the Diamondbacks, too, they're one of three teams with 100 or more stolen bases on the season, so they steal bases as well. Andrew Chafin was reinstated from the paternity list, and Joe Mantiply was optioned to AAA. TJ Antone will begin a minor league rehab assignment on July 25th. Luke Weaver is expected to make his next start after being struck on the left arm with a line drive. And tonight you get to see Brandon Fatt is coming back. He's being recalled from AAA Reno to start for Arizona against Brandon Williamson for the Cubbies. Mets and Boston game was suspended yesterday because of the rain. So I should say suspended, canceled, rained the hell out. The stairs were just pouring down rain it looked like freaking niagara falls at the ballpark harper made his first career start at first base the car the cleveland team ended philly's interleague winning streak at 12 games they beat the philly six to five cleveland improved 28 to seven when scoring at least five runs philly squandered some early scoring chances and lost for just the 14th the fourth time in the last 19 road games They stranded 10 runners, and they left the bases loaded three times through the first six innings. The Phillies finished one win shy of matching the record of 13 consecutive interleague wins. Reds have a player who creates runs just by stealing bases, and yes, they have. I think they might have a couple. Cleveland's third sellout this season pushed the Guardians over the 1 million mark in home attendance. They reached 1 million in their 46th home game of the season after getting there in 59 last season. So I have to say baseball attendance is up at the ballparks. Oh, that's true, Danny. I have to admit this. I'm all excited because the Diamondbacks and the Giants are only within two games of the Dodgers, but our Dodgers fan here, our resident Dodgers fan, decided to let me know that before the All-Star break, the Dodgers were looking at the Diamondbacks and the Giants' taillights, and now the West is looking at the Dodgers' taillights. So, okay, I'll give you that. Fine. 
Jose Ramirez had four hits. David Fry drove in two runs. JT Real Muto hit a two-run homer. Bryson Stott hit a solo home run. Emmanuel Classe, 26 save and 33 tries. Josh Bell hit a run-scoring double, and Trey Turner tripled and scored. Sir Anthony Dominguez pitched one inning for Triple A Leahy Valley at Toledo as he moves closer to a return. He's expected to pitch again today. Lehigh Valley. Lehigh Valley. <laughs> Wait, didn't we go there? Yes. We went to that game, right? Yes. And I don't know how to say it. Whatever. At least I'm saying the Diaz name right now, thanks to our boy uh, Tito Luna. Jose Alvarado played catch from 75 feet for the second straight day without any issues. Rob Thompson and said Alvarado will be uh, following a similar program as Dominguez and throw bullpen sessions before being sent on a rehab assignment. Guardians Cal Quantrill uh, will throw a bullpen session today as he continues to slowly work his way back. They're exercising caution with this guy because he was already on the injured list earlier this season with the same ailment. Tonight you get to see Tanner Beebe against Zach Wheeler. Eddie Heckman says that Gunnar Henderson has hit several triples lately, so that's good. And Unholy says he saw Steve Busby pick runners off first base more than once after faking a pickoff at third base. Love it. Stardog on his road trip to see Eddie at Baltimore last year stopped and saw two games at Pittsburgh. What a great time that was had by all there. Wish we could have been there. All right, on to your Homer team, Danny Fuller. Mookie Bess insists that he didn't even think about 2020 or even hear the loud chants for the visiting team when the Dodgers returned to Globe Field for the first time since winning a World Series title there. Freddie Freeman hit a two-run double and a solo homer before scoring the go-ahead run as the Los Angeles Dodgers beat the Texas Rangers 11-5, to snapping the Rangers' six-game winning streak. Andrew Haney allowed four runs and five hits over five innings. He had thrown 10 and a third scoreless innings his previous two home starts. Tony Gonsolin struck out six and allowed two hits over five innings, but walked three and gave up four runs. J.D. Martinez had two RBIs, singles, and drew a bases-loaded walk. Corey Seager got his 15th homer, but he exited the game two innings later after he hurt his hand sliding head first into second base for one of his on his double. He had a sprained right thumb, but the X-rays were negative. He already missed 31 games earlier this season with a left hamstring strain. Freeman's 18th homer was a solo shot with two outs in the fifth to tie the game. Nathaniel Lowe hit a two-run homer in the first for the Rangers, who had been the only team without a loss since the All-Star break. The six-game winning streak was their longest since 2019. Dodgers rookie center fielder Johnny DeLuca had two incredible catches against consecutive batters to end the fifth inning. It was a sellout crowd of 39,808. Clayton Kershaw threw about 40 pitches in a bullpen session. He's expected to face hitters in a simulated game on Monday. And Robert says he won't make a rehab start before being activated. Yay, which could be by next weekend. Dane Dunning goes against Bobby Miller today. The Braves beat the Brewers 6-4. to four. Michael Soraka gave up six hits and four runs in six innings. He struck out four and walked two. Freddie Peralta, six runs and six hits in five innings. Austin Riley homered for the fifth time in his last four games. Austin Riley is 8 for 17 with 13 RBI during the surge, going deep in each of the four games. He became the first Braves player with at least five homers and 13 RBI in a four game stretch since Eddie Matthews did it in 1959. Do you remember that, Unholy and Lenny? Do you remember? Do you remember Eddie Matthews in 19... Eddie Matthews, third base. King Hap, great to see you, my friend. Wonderful times had by all. 
Riley hit a two-run homer in the third and then singled and scored in the fifth. He went two for four. Riley just on fire. I love Riley. I traded him for Soto. I don't know. I've just had a cruddy year for trades. Orlando Garcia, two-run homer. Willie Adamas, two-run homer. William Contreras went two for four. He scored twice in his first game against his former team. Atlanta held out closer Rocio Iglesias after he pitched on Tuesday and Thursday. Kirby Yates struck out two Milwaukee. Okay, Kirby Yates struck out the first two Milwaukee batters, and then things started to go south for him. He walked two, but he earned his second save in five opportunities. The Brewers wasted another outstanding performance from their bullpen. Their bullpen has thrown 24 and two-thirds straight scoreless innings. Max Fried allowed six hits and three runs over three and a third in a rehab appearance for AAA. He threw 65 pitches. Brian Anderson took grounders before the game. Craig Council said Anderson isn't expected to get activated until at least Thursday. Victor Caratini was Milwaukee's starting first baseman for the first time this season, while the Brewers continue to play without Rowdy Tellez, who was on the injured list with a right forearm issue. They liked Caratini at first. They made some comments that he can really play defensively at that position. And tonight you get to see Adrian Hauser against Alan Winans. He's making his Major League debut for the Braves. Lenny's yelling at Laura. (laughs) <laughs> at least he's yelling right all right byron buxton he can energize the twins like nobody else he halted an 0 for 26 skid by homering in his first two at bats alex kirilov and ryan jeffers also took lance lynn deep for the twins in a 9-4 victory over the white Sox. plug your ears daniel buxton hit a homer in a five-run first inning that Kirilov sparked with a two-run shot. Buxton's batting average fell below 200 last week during his third hitless streak of at least 20 at-bats this year. His two homers made it 17 on the season, though, and this was his 10th career multi-homer game. The first home run was his second hardest-hit ball of the season at 114.3 miles per hour. He batted sixth, which is his lowest spot in the order since the 2021 season opener. The Twins are 41-12 and when scoring four or more runs. They kept their two-game lead on Cleveland in the AL Central after scratching two starters from the original lineup because of pink eye. The Twins have been in first place in the weak division for 104 out of 114 days this season, despite barely staying above the 500. Twins starter Joe Ryan gave up a home run to Andrew Benintendi on his first pitch and a two-run shot by Yasmani Grandal, but got his second win in his last 10 turns. And poor Lance Lynn, his ERA rose to 618 despite three of the nine runs he allowed beat were unearned. His first inning ERA is the worst in Major League Baseball. It's 10.80. He surrendered four home runs. It was a career high, matched his career high, and he's allowed more home runs than any other pitcher this season. 28. Andrew Vaughn was out for the third straight game with a bone bruise in his left foot. He fouled a ball off of it on Tuesday. Jorge Polanco has moved to third base during his rehab assignment, so second baseman Edouard Julian can stay in the lineup when Polanco is back. Julian is 17 for 29 with three doubles and three homers in his last nine games. Royce Lewis is halfway into a six-week recovery. Tonight you get to see Dylan Cease against Sonny Gray, who's winless with a 4-3-5 ERA over his last 13 turns. The Angels beat the Pirates 8-5. Otani allowed four homers for the first time in his Major League career, pitched six-hit ball into the seventh inning, and he earned the win. Five runs on six hits with nine strikeouts, and he got a standing ovation amid chance of MVP from the Angels fans in his final mound start at home before the Major League trade deadline August 1st. The Angels are still saying that they're unlikely to trade him, 
particularly if they're in the playoff race at the deadline. But I think, you know, John Morosi said if they could just beat the Yankees and the Red Sox in the standings, they'll probably not trade him. But Otani also uh, scored two runs and drew three walks yesterday. Los Angeles had gone one and ten around the All-Star break, but has now won four in a row and five of their last six games. Henry Davis became the first Major League player to homer twice off Otani. The number one overall pick in the 2021 draft had three total hits off Otani. G-Man Choi homered, and Jack Suwinski hit his 20th home run. Otani had allowed three homers in three previous starts over his six seasons for the Angels, but never four homers in a single start in the majors or during his years in Japan. Moustakis hit a three-run homer, his fifth homer in 17 games since joining the Angels. Trey Cabbage, who got his first Major League call-up one week ago, hit his first Major League homer last night. Zach Nito, eighth homer of his impressive rookie season, and Taylor Ward hit his 12th homer. Otani's bullpen went two and two-thirds scoreless innings, with all-star closer Estevez finishing up for his 22nd save. Mickey Moniak a double. The Angels homered in their 19th consecutive game overall, setting a new franchise record set by the 1982 team. And Pirates opened a six-game Southern California road trip with their sixth loss in seven games since the all-star break. Johan Oviedo, five runs on three hits and three walks over four innings. Mike Trout got the stitches out of his hand on Wednesday, but it must fully heal before he can swing again. He's still expected back in August. Tonight, Osvaldo Beto makes his seventh start for the Pirates. He faces Reed Detmers. Two more games. All right. The Astros beat the A's 6-4. The win moved the Astros 12 games over 500, matching their season high. The Astros win their ninth straight against Oakland in a streak that's dated back to last season. Oakland has lost 10 of 12. Framber Valdez beat Oakland for the third time this season. Six hits, four runs, four strikeouts, and two walks. The only pitcher to remain in Oakland's rotation all season, J.P. Sears, Allowed eight hits and five runs in five and two thirds. He's winless since June 11th. But Kyle Tucker, the star of this game, he's been one of the American League's best hitters against lefties this season. And he credits his success to hours of playing wiffle ball with his brother Preston when they were growing up. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Preston Tucker is a left handed pitcher who is currently on the injured list with the Padres. That, that's Tucker's brother. Tucker hit three home runs in a game for the first time in his career and drove in four runs, and his average against lefties is 364 on the season with seven home runs. He extended his road hitting streak to 18 games, 17th homer of the season. It was his fifth multi-homer game of his career, including the playoffs. Alex Bregman home run, Ryan Presley 23rd save this season and 100th save of his career. Jose Altuve took infield took infield and did some hitting before the game for the third time since his injury. Baker says the next move in Altuve's rehab would be decided after the game. Jordan Alvarez is on rehab assignment with AAA Sugarland and could rejoin the team on Monday. Brent Rooker was originally in the lineup, but he was a late scratch due to illness. Tonight you get to see Javier against Paul Blackburn. Seattle's Teoscar Hernandez game-winning hit against his former team. Mariners rallied for a 3-2 win over the Blue Jays. Teoscar Hernandez's winning single capped a three-hit game for Hernandez. Both starting pitchers were excellent, including Kikuchi, who tossed five and a third shutout innings facing his former team for the second time in his two seasons with the Blue Jays. Four hits allowed, three of which were infield singles. He struck out eight and walked only one. He had not pitched past the fifth inning in each of his past three starts and had allowed 10 earned runs during that span. Bryce Miller also won home run, but only three hits and struck out six on 75 pitches. They're being cautious with 
uh, Bryce Miller's pitch count. It was the eighth time in the past 10 games between these two teams that the outcome was decided by either one run or in extra innings, including last year's AL wildcard series. Paul Sewald pitched the top of the ninth to earn the win. Danny Jansen homered for the 12th of the season and the ninth time one of his homers has either tied the game or given Toronto the lead. Seattle outfielder A.J. Pollock was replaced in the eighth inning due to a sore hamstring. Tonight you get to see Kevin Gaussman. He's going to face Seattle for the second time this season. He threw seven shutout innings with 13 strikeouts against the Mariners in April against Logan Gilbert, who in his last three starts has allowed three earned runs and 21 innings of work. 10 o'clock exactly, people. (laughs) Sorry, I had to rush through the last couple games. But it was so nice to see all of you in the chat room. We really appreciate you coming in on a Saturday morning. Mary's here. Unholy's here. Boston Paul. J.R. Matz. Doug, wonderful to see you. Um, Tito Luna, thanks for teaching me how to say the name. Diaz. Leonard Donaldson. Guest Chris, uh, who else we got? Lots of people. Big Al on the Prowl, fellow Met fan, Boston. Post-1958. Post Next time I go to a game to meet you girls, I'm bringing Big Al on the Prowl with me. A huge Mets fan, lives right here in the city. Would love to bring him to Kenny Flamia. Great to see you on the West Coast. Is Kenny Flamia? No, that's not on the West Coast. Danny Fuller on the West Coast. Daniel Ferrara, Data Premier, Eddie Heckman, Jay Gibbs, King App, Merrill, I can't see past, and Mitchell. Who else we got, Leonard? Unholy. Unholy and his dogs. Triple play. Triple play. Tommy Johnson. Tommy Johnson, happy birthday. Post 1958. Post 1958. And that's it. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Lady in the Legend, 9 a.m.